One of the key assumptions in regression analysis with OLS estimation is that there is no endogeneity. The endogeneity issue has been ignored in the past, but it has been receiving increased attention in the recent years in many editorials and journals are increasingly requiring that the authors who submitted the journals address the issue of endogeneity explicitly. This has been uh, difficult to identify issue because endogeneity cannot be tested directly from the regression results, but you require more advanced modeling techniques. Let's look at what the issue of endogeneity is about and I will explain how you can deal with this issue in later videos. Understanding endogeneity is uh, it's useful to start from experimental design. So uh, in experimental design the assignment here are we have a random assignment to treatment and con control then we administer some kind of treatment to one group the other group doesn't receive a treatment we measure the outcome variable of interest then the difference between these two measures post-treatment can be interpreted as a causal effect. So what justifies interpreting this difference as causal? It is the assumption that R is exogenous. So the R here, the, the random assignment, doesn't depend on the variable that we are interested in studying. For example, if we test the medicine, then uh, who gets to the medicine, who gets the placebo, shouldn't depend on the initial health of the people. So it's important that this is randomized independently of what we are studying and that guarantees exogeneity. If R is endogenous, it means that the R depends somehow on the uh, variable that we're studying, for example people's health. Let's say that we have uh, a, a medicine that has some side effects and we have people who vary how sick they are and we have people who can choose whether they go to the treatment or control. In that scenario, people who are not that sick will choose to go to the control to avoid the side effects and only those people who are really sick choose to go to the treatment group. If that happens, then uh, the assignment to the treatment and control is no longer exogenous. Instead, it's endogenous because it depends on the health of the people, the characteristic that we're studying. Because R is endogenous, there are initial differences in health between these two groups and then we cannot anymore uh, interpret this difference after the treatment as causal effect. So that's clearly a problem. Another way of understanding endogeneity in multiple regression contexts is to look at the error term. So here we have a regression model in a path diagram presentation. So we have the y, the dependent variable, 3x, x as the independent variables. We have the intercept and the error term. And the error term here represents all possible causes of y that are not included in the model. So everything that can cause a y that is not included in the list of x's here goes to the error term. If the error term or on any of these omitted causes correlate with any of the included causes, then we say that this, for example, x1 here becomes an endogenous explanatory variable. So a variable is correlated with the error term, it be, it's endogenous and that causes problems. The general condition that one or more of these variables are correlated to the error term is called endogeneity. So that's the problem. Endogeneity, we assume that the error term does not depend or is not correlated with any of the explanatory variables. If it is, OLS regression will be inconsistent and biased. So how, can, uh, how does endogeneity arise? There are three basic mechanisms that are useful to understand. First simple mechanism is that there is a common cause let's call it E of X and Y that is not included in the model. For example, if we're studying the effects of CO gender on profitability and uh, there's a common cause industry so that some industries are more likely to hire women, some industries are more, aver more profitable than others. That's a common cause of X and Y producing a spurious correlation. If we don't include industry as a control variable then it's an omitted cause 
that goes to the error term and it's correlated with x. A more general presentation is that uh, x is simply correlated with some unmodeled causes of y and that could happen for multiple different reasons. I'll provide examples at the end of this video. Then a special case that is sometimes of interest is uh, simultaneity. So x and y have a reciprocal causal relationship. So x causes y and y causes x. So if x causes y then the error term of y must include the error term of x because x is the sum of y plus the error term of x and the other way around. So that causes uh, an endogeneity problem if you have these two-way paths. All of these issues uh, we can deal with if we understand the issue and we know where the problem is and we have a bit more data, more variables, but that's uh, going to be covered in later issues. Now it's important to understand what is the problem and then at later on we will talk on how to deal with the problem. Let's take a look at uh, Deep House's paper, the market share. So I demonstrated this before in the context of control variables. The idea is that uh, larger firms are more strategically deviant, less yeah, larger firms are more strategically divided, the positive correlation here, and larger firms are, are less profitable. If we omit the market share from the equation, we will get an omitted variable bias. And uh, what will happen now that market share is an omitted cause, it is a cause of ROA not included in the model, and it will be included in the error term in the regression. So anything that is supposed to be causing ROA, that is not included in the model will be represented by the error term. And we know from these empirical results that market share and strategic deviation are correlated. Therefore, strategic deviation is now correlated with the error term and uh, strategic deviation becomes endogenous. Of course, whether a variable really is endogenous or not, we cannot really say it based on the regression results. We need some additional variables called instrumental variables that I'll talk later or we have to argue the no endogeneity assumption or exogeneity based on existing theory. So this leads to omitted variable bias and uh, the effect of tragic deviation will be overestimated by threefold. Let's take a look at an uh, endogeneity problem, another one. So we have a uh, investment in new factories, whether a company decides to invest in new factories or not, and we have these investment decisions, we are trying to explain companies' return on assets with those uh, investments. So what does the, the question of asking, do I have an endogeneity problem, begins by asking uh, what does investments in new factories depend on. So why do some companies invest in, in new factories and others don't. So what causes the variance? So what does the investment in new factories depend on? Well probably depends on company strategy. If the company strategy is to grow they will probably invest in new factories and if they don't want to grow they are probably not investing in new factories. So that's that simple. Now what is the, uh, the no endogeneity assumption here? Unless we have this Firm strategy as a control variable, we are assuming that return on assets otherwise is completely independent of company strategy. So company strategy can influence ROA only through influencing investments. That is of course implausible. Strategy uh, influences performance in multiple different ways. So we have an omitted common cause strategy. Companies investments depend on strategy. ROA depend on strategy or partly through investments but also through other means. If we don't control for strategy in this kind of model we will have an endogeneity problem. So this uh, endogeneity problem is uh, explained really well by this editorial uh, by Keto Kivian Guide in Journal of Operations Management. And the problem is that uh, we assume that all other causes are independent of the included causes and that is uh, implausible. 
and uh, the problem is that our estimates will be, will be biased and inconsistent. Then uh, they explain an, an example where you could reasonably also argue that a causal effect goes to a different direction than what the author said and if the author doesn't really take that into consideration then uh, that's uh, game over for the paper. They also explain that uh, the endogeneity issue must be argued if you cannot do it empirically you have to argue based on theory. So why do you think that your independent variables for example or uh, investment in, into new factory is independent of any other causes of ROA. Then you have to figure out what causes ROA differences, company strategy, you have to argue that manufacturing uh, plant investments or factory investments are uncorrelated with strategy. That's an implausible assumption so you have an endogeneity problem.